Now at the Shipwreck Centre we've got a lot of ship models, you know, and these models span centuries. One of the most famous stories, is, uh, which a lot of people will be aware of, is the HMS Bounty and the famous mutiny. Fabulous story and, and a very famous one that's worth looking into. Immortalised into movie history in 1962 with Marlon Brando, and again in 1984 with Anthony Hopkins, the story of the mutiny on the bounty has long been a fascinating part of maritime history at the peak of British colonial rule. With the anniversary of the launch of the bounty fast approaching on the 3rd of September, we dive into the story of the famous mutiny, taking us all the way from the Solent to the South Pacific. The Bounty's mission was a botanical one, searching for breadfruit to sustain the slaves on sugar plantations of the West Indies, indelibly tied to slavery and the sugar rush that dominated commerce and fortunes of the period, this story is one of both chaos and drama. The ship was commanded by William Bly, considered by some to be the archetypal tyrannical ship's captain, albeit with an impressive sailing record. Bly recommended for the position was Captain Cook's own sailing master on the Resolution during its third voyage, which even crossed the Arctic Circle. Setting sail in 1787, the Bounty left Spithead in the Solent and spent 10 months and 27,000 miles at sea, navigating the equator, Cape Horn, and after changing course, the Cape of Good Hope, before finally arriving in Tahiti in 1788. The Bounty spent a total of five months carrying out its mission, collecting over a thousand breadfruit plants for transportation. Time spent on the island also found the crew collecting native customs, tattoos, and in the case of first mate Fletcher Christian, who will meet again, a Tahitian wife. Departing Tahiti in 1789 with its cargo of breadfruit, Commander Bly was shortly to face mutiny from 22 of his men. Bly had sowed the seeds of mutiny through his disciplinary attitude. Christian bore the humiliation of Bly for the final time on the 27th of April, 1789, having been accused of stealing food from the ship's stores. This was the provocation that finally sparked the match for the trouble to come. By the next day, on the 28th of April, the mutiny was in full swing, splitting the ship into two factions. Taken bloodlessly, it wasn't long until the bounty fell under control of Christian and his rebels. Overcome and resigned to the ship's boat, Bly, with several crew that remained loyal, undertook a perilous journey to a Dutch colony in Timor, over 3,500 nautical miles away. To some, he might have been a questionable commander, but undeniably, he was a talented seaman, having navigated the journey without a map. Bly and his small crew arrived 47 days later where they raised the alarm about the mutiny on board the bounty. Bly would later return to England where he was acquitted of any wrongdoing. Meanwhile, the mutineers, led by Christian, initially sailed for Dubai where they were greeted by hostile fighting from native islanders. After three months, they were forced to return to Tahiti. Arriving back, 16 of the mutineers chose to remain there taking their chances that they would not be captured, although this would be short-lived. The HMS Pandora, sent by the Admiralty, arrived to capture and return the mutineers for trial, detaining them on board the ship in the aptly named Pandora's box. The mutineers remained imprisoned on the ship until it was eventually wrecked on the Great Barrier Reef during its return journey in 1791. Christian, not wanting to remain on Tahiti, instead set sail with his remaining crew, as well as Tahitian captives who had been lured on board unwillingly and who would later prove to be his downfall. Upon leaving, Christian and his crew found the bounty grounded on a sunken reef. Wanting to make a quick exit, they used the ship's spare anchor to haul her off, but the anchor ultimately became stuck in coral, so they had to cut it loose and leave it behind. 
This anchor was retrieved in 1935 and is still currently able to be viewed on a public square on Pitcairn Island. Having freed the ship, Christian sailed on, passing Fiji and the Cook Islands before arriving at Pitcairn Islands in 1790. These islands, having previously been lost on naval maps, looked to be a promising hideout for the remaining mutineers and their Tahitian captives. Once reaching the island, the crew moved all supplies from the ship and set fire to the bounty in what is now known as Bounty Bay, to prevent any chance of discovery or escape. The burning of the bounty is now celebrated as a national holiday on the 23rd of January in both Pitcairn and the Norfolk Islands. In the almost 20 years that followed, it is believed that tensions between the captives, coupled with repeated mistreatment of Tahitian women, led to the eventual murder of Christian by four Tahitian men. Over the course of the next few years, the mutineers who remained undetected would also suffer similar fates to Christian, until 1808 when a whaling ship eventually discovered the final mutineer and survivor, Seaman John Adams. Adams was eventually given amnesty for the mutiny and adopted Christianity, which he spread to the Pitcairn population. The main settlement of Pitcairn remains to this day Adamstown, which was named after John Adams. The story of the bounty continues long into the present day. In 1957, Louis Marsden discovered the remaining wreck of the bounty, where his dives unearthed a range of surviving artefacts, including a rudder pin, nails, oarlocks and fittings. The HMS Bounty was also reconstructed in 1960 for the film The Mutiny on the Bounty, and was used again in the 2006 Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. The replica eventually sunk during Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Both tragically, and perhaps equally as interesting, the sinking of the replica claimed the life of Claudine Christian, a descendant of Fletcher Christian himself. 